Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 23 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll talk about a few more commonly used built-in string functions available in SQL Server. Specifically, we'll talk about left, right, char index, and substring functions. And we'll also look at a real-time example of using these string functions. Now, before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 11 and 22 of this video series. Okay, so what is left function? Left function returns the specified number of characters from the left-hand side of the given character expression. Let's understand what we mean by this. So select, let's say I have a string called a, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to retrieve the first three characters from the left-hand side of the string. Okay, so I can use the left function for that. Okay, so select left, and if you look at the IntelliSense that is available in SQL Server, it is expecting um, an expression of type and var char. So let's pass this there. Okay, and then the next parameter is the number of characters that you want from the left hand side of this expression. Let's say I want three characters. So when we try that, we should get ABC. On the other hand, if you want maybe four characters, just pass in four, you should get also, I mean, get D as well. Okay, now, so right is the inverse of left. Okay, left function returns the specified number of characters from the left hand side of the given character expression, whereas right returns the specified number of characters from the right hand side of the given character expression. Okay, so if you want, let's say, DEF, okay, then all you do is instead of left, you will say right, and from the right side, let's say I want only three characters, so you get the last three characters, which is DEF. So we get that. Okay, so those are left and right functions in SQL Server. Now, another very useful function in SQL Server is the char index function. At first, it may it may sound, you know, a little complicated to use that, but it's pretty simple. Okay, if you look at this function, it has got three parameters. Okay, um, the expression to find, expression to search, and start location. Let's look at an example which makes it clear. Now, let's say I have an email address something like this. Uh, maybe Sarah at aaa.com. So aaa.com is the domain. Now let's say within this email, I want to find the index of this at symbol. How do I do that? I can make use of the char index function. Okay, so select. I can use the char index function. And if you look at the char index fun function, it expects three parameters. You know, the first parameter is the expression that you want to search for. It could be a string or a character. Now, in our case, it's a character. We want to search the at symbol. So I want to search the at symbol. And then the next parameter is another expression of type var char. This is nothing but the expression which you want to search. So I want to search for this at symbol. I want to find the index of this at symbol within this given expression. Okay. And then um, the third optional parameter is the starting position. So if you look at that, the third parameter is the start location. Now, do you want to start at the beginning of this expression or somewhere in between? Okay, now let's assume that you have maybe two or three at symbols in that given expression and you want to find the last one. Okay, so in those circumstances, you can use, you know, the starting position. Okay, so let's say in our case, the starting position is one and that's optional. If you don't specify that parameter, it's going to anyway start at, you know, position one of the string. So now, when we execute this, we should get the index of the at symbol, which is 5. So if you look at this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the index of the at symbol, you know, is at the fifth location. Okay, so we get the index of that letter. So char index is basically used to return the starting position of the specified expression in a character string. And keep in mind, start location is optional. All right. Now another very useful function is substring. As the name itself says, substring. I want 
a part of the string. So substring basically returns part of the string from the given expression. Now look at this. If you want a part of a string from the given string, then obviously you will have to tell, okay, the string itself from which you want that part, and then where you want to start and how many characters you want. Okay, so those are the three parameters here. The the actual expression, where do you want to start and and how many characters you want. Okay, let's see that in action. Now let's say if you look at this uh, you know email address sarah.com, what I want is I want only the domain part. Okay, here the domain is aaa.com. I want just the domain part. How do I do that? I can use substring. Okay, so select I can say substring of the expression. The expression is nothing but this email. And then you you want to specify the starting position. The starting position is one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So you don't want anything until here. You want you know starting at position six. So I want starting at position six. And then how many characters? Three four, five, six, seven characters. So seven. So what is this going to do? This is going to give us that substring from this entire email. So when we execute this, we should get only the domain part. Okay. So these two functions are extensively used, char index and substrings, especially when you want to manipulate strings. So substring function returns substring part um, from the given expression. Okay. Now, if you look at the way we have used this function, we have hard coded these values. You know, at which position do you want to start, and how many characters do you want? Now, if you remember, um, we want to start at. I mean, how did you say that we want to start at position six? You know, because the at symbol starts there. We have counted that, and then we specified. Okay, after the at symbol position, you know, from that position onwards, we want the substring okay but this is a little dangerous let's assume you know an email address is of like something like uh, uh, maybe pam which is only three characters pam at uh, bbb.com so if you look at this email address it has got only three four records now if i pass this in pass this email address to this substring function, look at what's going to happen. It doesn't give us exactly what we want. We only got bb.com. It knocked off one letter. That's because you want to start, you know, you want the substring from one, two, three, four, from the fifth location. Okay, but here it's the sixth location that we have specified. Now, when we do this, we get that correctly. So that's the issue with hard coding. So instead of hard coding, what you can do basically, you can use this char index function, which will calculate you know the index dynamically so you want the char index of whatever so i want the char index here it is spam at bbb.com so instead of hard coding that we can just pass the email address and now when we execute this we should get the same result except that okay and another thing look at this since we have hard coded that okay and if you look at this one we are actually getting rid of um, M and we got this extra letter at symbol there and to get that because we don't want to start at that position instead we want to add one because the char index of at symbol will give you one two three four but you don't want to start at fourth location you want to start at fifth location so add one to that so now when you execute this you should get what you expect Okay, and similarly, you can also, um, you know, dynamically calculate the number of characters you want. How how can you calculate the number of characters you want within that string? Look at this. Um, you know, in this string, I I want to start at this location. Okay, and that you have specified using char index. Okay, and the next thing that you have to tell, okay, from this location, how many characters do you want? Okay. Now, if you want to get the total number of characters that are available here, don't you think if you get the total length of this string and then subtract the char index of at symbol? Because the char index of at symbol, what will it give you? It will give you 1, 2, 3, 4. And the total length, 4 plus 7, 11. Okay. From 11, subtract 4. 
okay, which will give us 7. So we can say, okay, I want the char index of this one, which will give us the char index of this symbol, and I want the total length of the string. So if you want the total length of the string, what you can do, you can use length function, and we have spoken about this in the previous session. So length function of what is that? Of the email. And then from that length, we want to subtract the char index of the th symbol. Okay, so now if we execute this, now we don't have those values hard coded. Now this select statement should work with um, any emails. Look at that, we get the exact same output. Now, at the beginning, it may sound a little complex, okay? There are a lot of function calls here, and it, it sounds a lot of confusing, but trust me, it's very simple if you understand how char index, substring, and length function works. It's just that instead of hard coding the values, we are calling one function inside another function, okay? Now, this forms the basis for the simple real-time example that we have. Let's say I have our employees like this, the first name, last name, and their email, and I want, uh, you know, the total by domain. Okay, for example, in gmail.com, how many how many users are there with gmail.com domain? How many users are there with aol.com? Okay, I want to find that, and to do that, we use exactly the same logic that we have done here, but instead of, you know, hard coding the email address like this, we will be passing in the email column from our table. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So when we execute this query, we have all the employees here. All we want is an output like this. Okay, total email, I mean email domain and the total count. All right, so what do we want? In our output, we want the email domain first. So select, so we want the email column in the output, but we don't want the complete email. We just want the domain part, okay? And remember, to get the domain part, we have already written the substring function. So this will give you the domain part. So copy that, but then, Wherever you have hard coded this email, we want to pass in the name of the column. It's as simple as that. So email column, pass it there. Okay, so from where we want from TBL employee table. Okay, so when we execute that, we should get all the domains. And you want to give a meaningful name for that as email domain maybe. So when we execute that, we get the email domain. But we are getting all of the domains. Now, if you have watched part you know, 11 of this video series where we have spoken about group by, now it should be pretty simple to group those emails by the domain right now. You can just group them by this particular column and you're done. So the next thing that we want is the count of employees. Count of maybe email as total. And then since you are using count aggregate function, you want to use group by. So I want to group by by this expression. Okay. Uh, invalid column name, count of email. Okay. So you should get the output that we expect, email domain and the total. Okay. And there are other ways of achieving this one, but since we are talking about string functions, I thought it's better to use those functions and achieve this output. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.